In the name of the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. Christos Anesti. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the great feast of feast of Pascha, the Passover, the Lord's Pascha, the Lord's Passover, his resurrection from the dead, and when she destroyed death for us, and that through him we may always have life, and that life eternal. And we have victory in him over all suffering and all death and all hardships, and that victory in him eternal. We have a beautiful tradition in the Orthodox Christian Church. And I'm, I know that all of you at home have done this. You've dyed your eggs, and you've done your cracking of the eggs, and you're having your sudeki this morning for breakfast with the eggs, and you're also having, preparing your lamb and all the festivities. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a great feast. And we've asked all of you to please send them to Father William and to our church so that we can post them and share them because we're all together still as one, even though maybe physically separate. We're all one in heart and one in soul and body in Christ miraculously because nothing can keep us from Christ our God. And that's one of the lessons of this egg today. You see this egg? Okay. It's a reminder that nothing can keep us from the love of God. It's dyed red. Red for the heart, the color of love, but also the scarlet red, the deep red, of the Passover lamb and the one who is the king of kings, because the scarlet was reserved for royalty in ancient and medieval times. He is our king of kings. He is our passion. He is our love. He is our Passover lamb, the lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world and washes us clean by his blood, the blood that he shed on the cross for us. And through his cross, he grants us victory over death and a resurrection. For the resurrection came through the suffering and the death upon the cross. The cross points to, like a sword, to our victory over death, to our resurrection. Now, the ancient Christians were very wise. They looked at the world around them. They learned from God's creation. God's creation is his blueprint for the earth. Like, for instance, did you know that we're so worried about COVID right now, this virus? Did you know sunlight is good for you? It's the best disinfectant. Do you know when you open up the doors and windows and you go outside and you get fresh air and exercise, that's the best thing you can do. It makes you stronger. It increases your immune deficiency. Did you know that when you get vitamin D from the sun, that helps increase your immunity? It makes you stronger, it gives you stronger bones? Did you know the ancient Greeks knew that from a long time ago? I remember reading Herodotus when he talked about seeing a battlefield after the Greeks defeated the Persians who invaded them. And they looked at the bones, the bones of the dead Persians, and they noticed that their skulls were weaker. They weren't as strong. They weren't as sturdy as the ancient Greek skulls. And he said, this was his theory back then now, you're talking about way back, about 25 years ago, 100 years ago, he said it was because they wore hats all the time. And so the sun didn't hit their head and then didn't get the vitamin D that make their bones strong. And we know that today, that vitamin D makes your bones strong. So we learn many lessons from God in his life. Also, we're supposed to have our vitamins, right? We're supposed to eat well, be healthy, pray, rest, get fresh air, right? Exercise. But we're also supposed to get those minerals as well. God gives us through his beautiful creation, especially now in spring, when everything is colorful and blossoming and fragrant and beautiful, you look at all the different vegetables and all the different fruits, and they're different colors. If you have a different color of each one of those, you get naturally your vitamins and your minerals that keep you strong and healthy. God teaches us. God provides us all the answers. And the greatest answer of all is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who unites God and man, heaven and earth, visible and invisible, past with future in the eternal present, for he is the eternal present. Now, this egg reminds us of life. Now, the ancient Greeks and the early Christians looked around and borrowed from other civilizations like the Egyptians, the Phoenicians, and the Romans did the same thing. An egg was associated with life, with birth, right? Think about it. You have to have an egg first, and then comes the life. In this case, we have a beautiful little Easter egg, and the chick is inside the egg. There's life inside the egg. But that little chick is in the darkness, but it wants to come to the light. It wants to come out in to life and be free, not captive anymore, in darkness and shackled like Christ for us endured the shackling down in Hades, going down there and freeing Adam from the shackles, destroying the gates, the locks of Hades, and bringing Adam and Eve, and therefore through them humanity, out from the darkness and the death and the stench down there in Hades. This little chick didn't want to stay in here forever. He wanted life. He didn't want to be in the darkness forever, much like a baby in the womb doesn't want to stay forever. It struggles to get out, and it does get out. It gets out into the light. It gets out into the fresh air, and it's its own person. It's meant to be. It's God's will. We're supposed to be our own full person. So the little chick struggles, 
but the struggle's worth it. It gets out into the light and life. And that's how we have life, through struggle. And it's a reminder to us that the egg, like the tomb of Christ, cannot contain the uncontainable, the life of Christ. Christ endured this tomb so that through him we may be victori victorious over death and burial and all of humanity will overcome Hades and death and corruption. And so therefore, Christ's tomb is a life-giving tomb. In it is the light of life. The dark does not come overcome the light. And death does not overcome life. And so the tomb cannot contain Christ, just like the gates of Hades could not. And he busts open the gates of Hades and he comes up and breaks through the tomb and comes to us. And then he goes through the locked doors and the locked windows in the upper room to his disciples, goes right through them. They can't contain him either. And he shows himself. See, it's me, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the God-man, your teacher. Look at me. Look at my hands. Look at my feet. Look at my side where I was crucified. I am he. Nothing can contain me as God. And I was victorious over suffering, over humiliation, and over death and burial for you. And I grant that to you and all those who believe. And so this egg is a reminder of our victory over death in Christ. Light overcoming darkness. Hope overcoming despair. And so we take these eggs, and when we take them, we say, Christos Anesti, Christ is risen, and we hit the egg with one another, and we smile, because we're all going to be winners. How are we all going to be winners? Especially when one of the eggs cracks? Well, that's the beauty of it. It has to crack. Life has to come out. The gates of Hades are shattered. The sealed tomb is shattered. The windows and doors cannot contain Christ to come to his disciples and to come to you and me now, his modern-day disciples. So therefore, we rejoice when it cracks, and then also we can eat it and have the sustenance from God's nature. And an egg is replete with good vitamins, and it's good for us. Right, Mr. Mina? Or pharmacopios? The pharmacist? Minas? So this is a beautiful thing. So we rejoice if the egg cracks and if not. And don't play tricks. I remember when I was a little boy, my first parish at St. Paul's Greek Orthodox Church in Savannah, there was an older boy who was about 10 years old named Simon, and he used to always crack my eggs, and I would get disappointed. Found out that he had a red marble egg, and he was cheating. And that wasn't right. That was deceptive. But you know what? That was good, too, because you learn about disappointment in life, but at the same time, that disappointment, like death, becomes joy because Christ died so that we may all live with him, and the egg must crack, so we must eat it and have sustenance. And the cracking of the gate reminds us of Christ's resurrection from the dead. What beautiful lessons our Orthodox Christian Church has. And I want to share lastly with you a little story. We don't know if it's true, because it could be apocryphal. It could be a fable. <sighs> Whoa, see, no, me, my, my cup caught on fire. But we got the eternal light on the altar table. Don't worry about that. We can't extinguish God's light. There is an icon of a, a woman, and it's Mary Magdalene in the Orthodox Church. And Mary Magdalene was a close disciple of Christ, a woman disciple and apostle. And she was there at the tomb. And she followed Christ all the way to the end, even though most of the disciples ran away. She was very brave, braver than 11 of the 12 disciples, except for John. He was the only one that went to the foot of the cross. So Mary Magdalene went, and she's one of the mirror bearers. And she was one of the first to experience the empty tomb, the resurrected Christ. And she took it. She was an apostle, therefore, by spreading the word, she was apostle to the disciples and told them about the Lord's resurrection from the tomb. And so she also was an apostle to the nations. And there's a story that she went to the Caesar of the great Roman Empire, which could stretch out and spread the word of God and eternal salvation to the entire world. And she met Tiberius. And she was preaching to him about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our light and our life, the salvation of the world, and how he resurrected from the dead. And cynically, the Roman emperor humored her, but also put her down and said, it's more likely that those white eggs in that basket you are holding will turn blood red than a man rise from the dead. And as soon as he said that, the eggs that Mary Magdalene had turned the blood red of the Easter egg. And that's why we as Orthodox Christians diet the blood red of love, the color of of the heart, the color of the blood shed for us, the Passover lamb, the scarlet red of the king of kings, and love. Think about that. Love in Greek, agapo. I put it in the first person, present, because it has to be present, and you have to 
personalize it yourself. Agapo means I love. You must love. Love is shared. We can't just be loved. You must love too. So I must love because Christ loves us. And so therefore, agapo, first letter in Greek, alpha, last letter, omega. Who is the alpha, omega? Remember the words of John in Revelation? John who was at the foot of the cross, the beloved, of, the beloved disciple who put his head on Christ's chest and heard his heart, was close to his heart? Alpha, omega, the first and the last is Jesus Christ. And he said, it is finished. It is done. He completed the, the plan, the divine plan of the Father for us, for eternal salvation. Not just of us, but through us also, his beloved creation. Christos Sanesti. Christ is risen.